and welcome back. In the previous videos of this series, we unboxed 16 LiPo4 cells, which will be used to make uh, series strings of 16 cells apiece to construct a replacement battery bank that will be used uh, to replace an existing battery bank that is composed of flooded lead acid AGM cells or absorbed glass mat. Uh, now in order to capacity test and charge and discharge, basically test the LiPo4 cells, um, I've gone out and got a iCharger X8, which seems to be a pretty popular charger of choice when dealing with lithium batteries. Now that charger uh, does require some method of an external power supply. Uh, now a lot of individuals uh, seem to have gone out and gotten these uh, server power supplies that you see here. And uh, they are a much uh, cheaper alternative uh, to a purpose-built uh, standard bench power supply, especially at the current levels that you can get out of these uh, server-based ones. Now they do require a bit of modification uh, to get them to power up because they do expect, in this case, to be used inside of some type of server chassis. And that chassis would typically dictate to the power supply that incoming power is good, the outgoing power is good, and when to turn the power supply on. So uh, normally on these this HP power supply in particular, I didn't find much on the internet, but this is an HSTNS-PL12. Again, HSTNS-PL12. Now, these power supplies do vary a little bit in reference to which pins have to either be A, shorted together, or jumpered with a couple of resistors, again, in order to get the power supply to actually turn itself on to make it think that it's inside of some type of server chassis. Now this is not a how-to video, it's uh, just educational purposes only. Uh, if you decide to get one of these power supplies and modify them, you're, you're doing so at your own risk. Um, I decided to put this video together and add it to the series because again this particular model number, it's HSTNS-PL12, I didn't see a video out there that um, kind of showed what needed to be modified to get this particular power supply to power up. Uh, I did find a blog post of a gentleman who posted a picture of what pins needed to be modified and what it was came down to me was two 1k ohm resistors that you can see right there on the end and the pins they need to be attached to Let's see if that shows up well. Our pins 33 and the negative rail, which is 42. So a 1K ohm resistor between pin 33 and 42, and an additional 1K ohm resistor between 36 and 37. Again, that's a 1K ohm resistor between 33 and 42, and then pins 36 and 37. Pin 42 is your main negative output, your main negative rail. Uh, pin 33 is on the top of the board, very first pin. And 36 and 37 is one pin away from your negative rail. So you've got a negative rail, which is 42, 38, 37, and 36. And the way that looks on the power supply is like so. So you've got your pin 33 and 42, which is your neg main negative rail. So you've got one resistor here, and you've got that second resistor between pins 36 and 37. And you can see they're kind of sandwiched in between there. So this is your pin 42, this is your pin 38, and then the pin right next to them, the next two that have that secondary resistor, is 36 and 37 and with those on, uh, with those installed and we'll just turn this around so you get a back shot of this power supply You will no 
notice that light is now green. Without those two resistors, what this power supply would do is you'd hear the cooling fan spin on, but you'd have no output. So green output, green light basically means the power supply is checking everything, saying it's coming back, saying it's good, but it's got proper signal to start. And then also what you should have, if we check with our meter here, Yeah, and your main negative rail. And you can see, once I get the probe back where it belongs, this is kind of hard to do one handed, but there we go. We got a nice steady 12.31 volts output. So again, this section right here, this is your main negative rail output, and you'll see a little bit of a divide, and a set of pins, basically it's one solid contact, and that's your main positive. And hopefully this uh, provides some useful information, and I'll talk to you later.